Philadelphia. When I say that, what comes to mind? Well, there's really three things. The Liberty Bell, Rocky Balboa, and what? Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Bertha is fired up over there, the original flat top cowboy griddle, and we are throwing us on some ribeyes to make you the tenderest, tastiest sandwich in the world. Topping it off with what? A homemade cheese sauce with some green chilies in it. Okay, so cheesesteak traditionally has, it's kind of either the cheese whiz or the provolone method, right? And you're going to be doing both? Yes, but we're not going to use the stuff out well, of the... I want you to like, so there's the cheese whiz. So I want you to, have you ever had cheese whiz? No. I mean, is this stuff they put on them nachos at the ball game? The stuff out of the can that's got the spray nozzle, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's sort of what it tastes like right there. But we're gonna go ahead and make our own today. So to start with, we are going to add like a, a little over a teaspoon of cornstarch right here. A little teaspoon of garlic or so, like here. A little bit of ground mustard because I think it needs to give it that flavor that has a little kick to it right there at the end. Yes, let me look right in here and we'll see if we got some kind of seasoning that we can put in there. Instead of salt, I think we'll use our little dab of original, but not much because when we're using a cheddar in this, to me, there is automatically a little salty taste to it. Go ahead and mix that up pretty good and just That's set it. That's an interesting mixing method. It is, I like it. Now, get you a sauce pot of some kind, something or another. Look what them little cows is doing now. They're putting milk in little bottles. I really like that. When we're talking about cheesesteak, you really want it to be cheesy, right, Shan? I mean, it's got to be cheesy. And what would be more cheesy than some what? Cream cheese. So we're gonna use about four ounces here. So we're gonna dump this in there. Get your whisk. And I like to use these that are mesquite, I do. Give it a good stir. We have to get this simmering over here in Old Bertha, so I'll meet y'all over there to the stove. This has just begun to warm up good. I got four ounces of cream cheese, and I, I like to just go ahead and sort of cube it up to put it in there. I think it incorporates and melts a little faster. So any way you can get it in there, and I sort of let mine come to room temp before we started. Get rid of that. Can y'all do that in the house? Y'all ever been cooking and you're in the house and you open the oven door and you think, I don't know where to put this paper towel. Well, just chunk it right in there. That's what I do. Bertha is an incinerator. And stir this because we don't want that milk to burn, but also we got to get all this stuff melted in there and get it good and creamy smooth. And then we'll go on with the goodness. Well, we have let this simmer around there to where, I mean, it is smooth, silky smooth. At that time, you just need to pull it off your fire over here. Let's get that cheddar cheese in there. And you're just gonna stir it here till we get all that cheddar good and smooth. When you're doing this and you get it to this point right here, which I think is, whoa, we are oh so close we are. You need to just keep this sort of on a warm side of something, not over a burner, anything like that. And if you think it thickens up just any at all, add you just a little more splash of milk or cream back in there and stir it back up. But folks, if you'll wait on me just a minute, I'm gonna go over and get the cheese whiz and we're gonna look at this and you tell me which one you'd rather have. Now, remember, Shan brought this out there, okay? And sure, we would heat it up. So Shan is the taste tester today. So here's your cheese whiz, sugar. Oh, thanks. Uh-huh, try that. Now, I want you to try this. Oh my gosh. Smooth and creamy. Oh my gosh, there's like no. There's no comparison. Well, so the cheese was just kind of tastes really artificial, but the like garlic. And oh yes. But oh man. What would it be a Kent Rollins episode if we didn't cowboy it up, right? So to this cheese sauce and the fresh chili company here, we are going to have us some what green chili in there. And if y'all want something that's going to give you that great authentic taste, check out the fresh chili company there. I mean, ooh. But there is no comparison on this, and you can see. I love a cheese and green chili, uh -huh. like our mac and cheese. Yes, Woo! so we're just gonna set this right over here, 
we got to get over here to the flat top grill we call Bertha and get us some onions caramelizing. You go into one of them Philly cheesesteak places and they got one of them big old flat tops out there. Got all that meat and them onions and everything just going in. When you walk in the door, it's like, oh my gosh. When you walk out here, what you got? Bertha! Yes, Bertha is the original flat top grill she is. And we're gonna get them onions and everything to go in right here. But first folks, we need to have a dab of oil on there because it's gonna help. Could you also do this in like a cast iron? You could do this in a cast iron skillet. And you can tell that things might not be really level here. So, ooh, I love that sound, I do. Let's go ahead now. I've seen it done a lot of ways. To me, I don't know if it was traditional that they added the green bell pepper, but I like it in there for a little color, but also a little taste too. So let's get that in there. I have one yellow onion and I have one large green bell pepper. You need some really good utensils for this. Y'all been to like them places, you know, and then flip all the food up in there. We don't do that here, I'm just telling you. But we just want them onions to get good and brown and a little bit caramelized. And don't you like that flat top? I sure do. My gosh, Bertha, you're doing a good job. But I don't know if them folks up there in Philly are getting their legs burnt at the same time. If this was really, really hot, we'd burn them onions when we started out. I like to cook this slow. Bertha ain't got a whole lot of heat in there, especially when we go to cooking that meat in a minute. We want that to be a pretty slow process. But we're gonna look cook these down to where they just get good and tender and got a little brown color to them. I think right here at the end, we're just gonna give them a little drink of avocado oil, we are. We're just nearly there. We have got most everything browned up we have. Get them down here to the coolest part of the stove that we got. Two big old ribeyes. Now, I'm gonna really got two different ones out here. And I mean, not different cuts of meat, just two ribeyes. This come off a tomahawk, and this is just about a 14 ounce ribeye. Now, Traditionally, them folks that's doing it right up there and they got all this nice equipment, they got these big old loins that's just laying out there, that ribeye loin just laying out there and that thing just comes through there and slices and it is so thin, it is. But folks, you need to freeze these about 45 minutes before you ever start. So we're gonna try to just cut this down through here. So to the where, freezing helps it cut? Oh yeah, you can see what we end up with that way. So oh, wow. just keep slicing down through here and maybe them was in the freezer two minutes too long. Try to keep them as thin as possible. Let me get back to this one now and I'll show you because a lot of people are gonna cut this one here and just keep cutting here. Now, sure you're cutting against the grain of the meat. This one we cut here to have big thin pieces of meat, okay? This one, when you slice this off this way against the grain, sure it's gonna be tender, but look at that, it's gonna fall apart oh so easy. A lot of people say you gotta see them big old strips of meat in a Philly cheesesteak. And I think there's gonna be plenty for the spectators here that are gathered around camp. So don't lose patience, Big, if it's not coming your way too fast, okay? Low heat, not high. We don't want to just think, hey, I'm gonna throw these on there, but you cook all the moisture out of them that way. So we're just gonna go ahead and go to laying these out there. Whew, wonderful sound that is, Beagle, hear that? It don't take this stuff long. There is a great smell coming off here. Ooh, my goodness. Season this little thin meat at the last. Because when you're putting salt or something on there now, what are you doing? Just drying the meat out. So you can see, that don't take long. Can you talk about the 
chop mine? Huh? Can you chop mine? Yes. I'd like it chopped. When this one gets done, we will chop it. But these strips are going to cook the fastest first. So we're going to lay them out here, scatter them out just a little. In fact, that's the hottest side of the fire, so we're going to get them over there for just a minute. Put Shan's batch right here in the middle. It'll chop it. It's tender. And comment down there below, which do you prefer on yours? I'd rather have mine just like that. See that good color that we got right there? Now is time to season that little batch of meat right over there. So we're going to take that. Mine is done. It is. Oh my goodness. You can see most of the red color is cooked out of this. So let's go ahead and season this one. And if I got long enough arms, we're going to reach right over here. Pardon me, I'm going to walk right around there just a second. Slide this one back over here. We're going to give half of that to me and the rest of it to Shan. So when you get it to this point, you need to get you some good hoagie rolls or French bread. I've seen them use both. This Oki is headed to Philly because we're having cheesesteak. Look at all that cheesy goodness as you stir that thing around, then I want you to pile it back up. Mm. Get you one of them buns and spread that cheese sauce down both sides. Don't be scrimping. Lay it up on there. Give it a little mash. Let it set for just a minute or two. Get them flavors and then take that spatula and make sure it's big enough. Tilt it over and load the boat. Scrape them crumbs back up there. Get it on top and that's what we call a full meal deal. I cannot wait to get a bite of this. Mm, that is what I call fine dining. Ooh, that steak is cooked just right. Them green chilies mixed in that cheese sauce layered all up in there. I'm gonna have a bite of the other one just to make sure. Best Philly cheese steak I've ever eaten in my life. Well, you can see there was a wardrobe change here at intermission. There was. Now, I'd like to thank the Wyoming Boys School. It was recently that me and Shan got the chance to go up and speak to them young men up there. And oh my gosh, what a blessing it was for us. Now, I, I see y'all out there watching. They be watching our videos every week. And remember this, what I told you when I was there, you all make a difference. Sure, life's gonna get hard. It's gonna throw you some bumps. It's gonna throw you some holes in the road and you're gonna think you can't make it. But we're counting on you because y'all have counted on us to make these videos and we count on you to watch and we count on you because we care about you. But folks, that is a message for all of us too. We all make a difference. Life is gonna be hard, but we can adapt and we can overcome. But it is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying above camp. We commend you all. The rest of you, get on up in here. Come on close, because these sandwiches is heavy. I can't hold them up here long. God bless you, each and every one. Thank you for the hug, and I'll see you down the Philly Cheese Steak Trail. <laughs>